Science can now measure how our brains reflect and mirror each other. So it's not just the poetry of love that we can think about. It's the fact that there's a neuroscience of love, which is as real as what Shakespeare wrote about when he spoke about two people coming together really, really, really intimately. Thank you, Kafe. Hi, everyone. Okay, Kafe wasn't kidding. I need everyone to move forward. You're not going to be listening to a lecture. You're going to be going through an immersive experience accessing altered states. This will involve some eye gazing, some touching, some body movements, and we cannot have gaps in between us. So climb over a chair. You can reach to the person behind you and give them a lift. If you've been working out at 10x, and we have empty chairs right over here. And feel free to keep the edges empty. I want to get people as close to me as possible. So let me tell you what we're going to be covering today. Today, you're going to learn why in the Western world we get tricked into seeing the world from a particular lens, and that is the lens of the physical world. That everything that is real is that which we can touch. But in indigenous cultures of the world, they don't just function in the physical world. They have practices and rituals that help them go deep into the world of spirit, of mind, of soul. For example. I once went to spend a week with the Achua people in Ecuadorian Amazon, and there we sat with shamans who would give us ayahuasca, and we would go on these incredible trips in our head. And medicine like that can awaken you to this whole different parallel universe that often the Western mind isn't aware fully exists. But these worlds are as real to us as the physical world. Close your eyes for a moment. Bring back a memory of someone you truly love. It could be a pet. It could be a loved one. Just think of someone you truly love. Think about the memory of that person, the last hug or kiss that that person gave you. That person isn't here. You're not physically seeing that person, but the memory, the feelings, those are real. Human beings do not just exist in a physical world. We are dualistic beings. We exist in flesh, but also in consciousness. However, while we know this, most of us don't understand how dualistic we are. How much of our lives actually are pure consciousness? And what you're going to learn today is you're going to go on an incredible journey. We're not just going to touch on meditation. You're going to learn about altered states. You may open your eyes now. For example, lucid dreaming. Can you awaken in your dream and be in a dream world that is even more rich than the physical world? That means in this dream world, if you sip a cup of hot chocolate, it is so real, so delicious. It is tastier and better than any other hot chocolate you've ever tried in the physical world. And you'll remember it just like in the physical world. But get this, guys. Zero calories. <laughs> that is lucid dreaming. But we're going to go beyond that. We're going to talk about arousal. How many of you here have ever had sex? <laughs> If you have, you know that when you are making love to someone, often when there's a deep connection, you are in an altered state. You you feel different. You. You are experiencing the world in a different way. We create so many taboos around sex, but if you look at the great spiritual teachers, like for example Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks, in her Abraham Hicks books, wrote that the number one experience that souls want when they enter the human body is the sexual experience, because it is the closest that a soul has to realizing it's a soul. We're going to talk about ecstasy. Then we're going to go even further, and we're going to talk about what if consciousness was so real. That our consciousness can leave our physical body. 
This is sometimes referred to as out-of-body experiences or astral projection. So we're going to cover some pretty deep topics. Now here's the thing though, these topics are real, but in the Western world, we often diminish them with the words woo-woo. So I know, and I've had conversations with people here in this audience, and they're like, you know, I never bothered to come to Mind Valley before because I thought, this stuff is so woo-woo, and I'm an engineer, and I can't be around this. But the thing is, the world is changing. I just spoke at Google recently, and we spoke about meditation and deep connection and the space between human beings. I was just on the Microsoft podcast, the official podcast for Microsoft employees, and they wanted to interview me on crystals. <laughs> Think about that. Now, I know nothing about crystals, right? But it was interesting that that was one of the questions I got. So why is it that so many of us are resistant to these ideas? Well, there's a philosophical concept by Ken Wilber called the pre-trans fallacy. Now, Ken Wilber says this. I'm going to try to explain it without flip charts. We live in an era of rationality. The rational mind is what is building the world today in many ways, or so it appears from Silicon Valley to Wall Street. It is about the rational mind. And as we enter this era of the rational mind, rationalists look back at other subcultures in the human experience or pre-rational cultures and consider them obsolete. So the rational mind, Wall Street banker, might look at the indigenous shaman in the Amazon rainforest who pays, prays to the spirit gods and meditates and prays before he kills an animal and say, you know, I understand that that's your culture, that's cool, but there is no science behind that. So the rational mind looks at pre-rational ideas and considers them obsolete. Now, in many cases, this is actually good. In many cases, this is actually good because a lot of these pre-rational ideas are insanely dumb. If you open the religious books of the world today, there's a lot of love and there's a lot of goodness in them, but there's also a lot of obsolete ideas. They are pre-rational ideas, for example, that sug suggest that if you're gay, you are somehow wrong in the eyes of God. They are pre-rational ideas that suggest that we are born a sinner. All of this is nonsense, of course because it disconnects people. It actually takes away from the true essence of our soul, which is unity, which is connectedness. So the rational mind is not wrong here to look at pre-rational ideas and say, this, a lot of this stuff, it's, it's kind of magical thinking. But at the same time, they are, there's a new emergent era in human culture, and that is called transrational. And transrational is the era we are going into now. Transrational says, yes, okay, the magical thinking, that was cool 2,000 years ago, that they are spiritual ideas that are powerful that we need to look at. And these spiritual ideas are increasingly being studied by science. So what are transrational ideas? So pre-rational is Moses parted the Red Sea. Pre-rational is that if I do a particular dance, I can make it rain. Rational is Silicon Valley. Rational is the microchip. Rational is Wall Street. Transrational is the new emergent field we are going into, and that's the field where we talk about spirit, we talk about lucid dreaming, we talk about meditation, we talk about mindfulness, we talk about the human mind's ability to heal itself with the placebo effect. All of these are being studied by science. Ten years ago, when I started teaching meditation, I was embarrassed to tell my friends. Today, 44% of Fortune 100 companies are offering meditation classes to their employees. 10 years ago, I couldn't talk about lucid dreaming. Today, when you go to a big Silicon Valley conference like Summit Series, they are lucid dreaming instructors at the conference. This is the realm of transrational. This is the realm where Ray Dalio, the number one hedge fund manager in the world, says that his superpower to make billions of dollars comes from meditation. Transrational is the realm where, where Tom Bilyeu, the founder of the billion dollar company Quest Nutrition, those nutrition bars, and the, the YouTube show Impact Theory. When I ask him, where do your ideas come from? Because you've created a billion dollar company. He says, well, it comes through a process I call thinkitation. And I said, what is that? And he goes, well, I meditate and I think. <laughs> That's transrational. Now, the purely rational mind can, because you exist at this level, you are unaware of the level above you, transrational, you're unaware 
and, and, but you know the level below you, magical thinking or pre-rational. So the rational mind, the people who use words such as, this is too woo-woo, nah, this is too kumbaya, they're actually merging both because they cannot see the difference. They merge both. So they assume that lucid dreaming and meditation and astral projection are the same as the belief that Moses parted the Red Sea or that you are born a sinner or that gay people are wrong because some dude in the sky said so 2,000 years ago. That is called the pre-trans policy. It's a philosophical idea that explains why some people are afraid to embrace these concepts. But when you understand the fallacy, you start to see how what we're going to talk about is actually really, really, really rational. In fact, it is the ultimate truth. And this physical world is the one that is actually an illusion. Are you guys ready for this? Okay, so firstly, don't make the pre-trans policy. And feel free to Google it if you want to understand more of what that is about. So we're going to talk about an exploration of altered states. Stephen Kotler, who runs the Flow Genome Project in Silicon Valley, says, we live in a monophasic society. But Eastern and indigenous cultures are polyphasic. In other words, they don't just exist in the single waking state. They exist in multiple states. For example, the Achua people of the Amazon, they communicate in their dreams. So they literally use dream communication to talk across vast distances in the Amazon. And what happens is at 4 a.m. every day, the tribe wakes up, they come and they drink a particular tea together. And as they wake up at 4 a.m. and they drink tea together, they discuss their dreams. They talk about what they saw in their dreams. They talk about the messages that they heard. And it's astonishing because a couple of, um, couple of decades ago, a friend of mine, Lynn Twist, started seeing an Achua face in her dream. And she would see this like Amazonian man with red marks on his face and he would come to her dream and ask her for help. And she couldn't understand what was going on. Lynn Twist is one of the biggest fundraisers in the world for charitable causes. She wrote a book called Soul of Money. One day she described this strange face that was popping into her dreams to a friend. And he goes, oh, those markings, that's the Achua people. So she got connected. She flew to visit the Achua people. And it turned out they had been summoning her. These people were using dreams to communicate with a Western woman to bring her into their village. Now, what happened next was pretty, pretty damn cool. Lynn Twist founded an organization called Pachamama, and together they were able to preserve some 10 million acres of Amazon rainforest land from logging. But it started because these Achua people were able to project their consciousness into her dream, know exactly who to pull, the number one fundraiser in the Western world, and bring her into their fold. How cool is that? I was there. In fact, the, the Mind Valley community raised a quarter million dollars to, for, for that cause. So this, that's what? That's polyphasic. They're existing in two worlds, the physical world and the dream world. It's as real to them as your cup of coffee is to you. So what do we know from a scientific basis, right? We know that there are different brainwave states that we can measure in our head. Most of you right now are in the beta or waking frequency. Roughly 10% of you statistically would be at the alpha or restful state. You're kind of in this restful state if you are a frequent meditator. Maybe it's also genetic. Maybe you were born with a brain that's less prone to stress. Maybe you just um, had a wonderful conversation with a friend. Maybe someone just gave you a hug. You go into this restful, peaceful state. That's alpha. That's the level of restfulness, but also creativity. Now, you can slow down your brain further to theta. Theta is a dreamy state. When you're at theta, it's hard to keep your head straight. So when you're meditating and you start nodding off like that, you're dipping into theta. Theta is interesting. Theta is where ideas come from. Theta is the realm of psychic ability. But there is a state even beyond that, and that is delta. Delta is what you're in when you're asleep. Now, what do some of the greatest minds in the world say about these states? This is where it gets pretty interesting. Thomas Edison was known for his naps, right? So he created some 2,300 patents in the Western world, one of the greatest inventors of all time. And Thomas Edison had this, this idea where he would get his best ideas from naps. So he would sleep with a metal ball in his hand. And as he drifted off into sleep, his hand would drop, the ball would drop, it would hit an iron plate below him, jolting him out of sleep, and in his mind, there would be a new idea. 
And Edison, what he was doing was really, he called it efficient napping, I guess, but what he was doing was dipping from beta to theta, beta to theta. He was dipping in here to grab ideas and bring them out to the waking state. 2,300 patents. Now, was it just Edison? Well, the funny thing is, Edison had a famous assistant, Nikola Tesla, who was born not far from here. In fact, 10 minutes away from where we are is a Tesla park. Nikola Tesla was born a very short distance from here. This is what Nikola Tesla had to say about these states. He said, the mind is sharper and keener in seclusion and uninterrupted solitude. No big laboratory is needed in which to think. Originality thrives in seclusion, free of outside influences beating upon us to cripple the creative mind. Be alone. That is the secret of invention. Be alone. That is when ideas are born. This is why many of the earthly miracles have had their genesis in humble surroundings. When Tesla says be alone, he's talking about going into yourself, listening to that still voice within. Now, Tesla also said this, instinct is something which transcends knowledge. We have undoubtedly certain finer fibers that enable us to perceive truth when logical deduction or any other willful effort of the brain is futile. Tesla did not have access to an electroencephalograph machine to, or EEG machine to measure brain waves, but this is what Tesla was doing. He was able to access these states. In fact, one of Tesla's most famous quotes is this, my brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. Your brain is only a receiver. So what if your brain is like a radio and it can tune in to other frequencies? This is what we're gonna talk about. And you're gonna learn a couple of tools how. Are you guys interested in this? Yes. Awesome. So I spent a lot of time going and working with neuroscientists to, to hack my brain. Just like I go to a gym to work out, I also go to these like deep, highly expensive neuro training facilities to train my brain so that I can willfully go into these different states. I go into theta regularly for ideas and I go into delta, delta is this level, I go into delta to bend reality. What is also being observed right now is that people who are able to get to the delta level tend to be very lucky. They tend to be billionaires, they tend to be very creative, they tend to be lucky. It's like the universe has their back and their thoughts become reality fast. This is also being studied. So I actually am one of five people in the world who do something called delta training. And delta training is basically where you train your brain to be able to create ripples in time and space and influence reality. So I do that. And I wanna show you like a little bit of what that looks like. This is me at one of the neuro training facilities. So these machines actually exist. Now, this type of training is not cheap. It's bloody expensive. Neuroscientists are working with you. And that's a 3D printed helmet that's influencing the brain. But what I'm gonna to try to teach you here are some ways you can access these states on your own. So the first thing to understand is meditation. What happens when we meditate? And what exactly is meditation? So I wanna share with you a secret. Meditation is often, often, often like misunderstood in the Western world because we think it's about clearing your mind, focusing on your breath, getting very peaceful. And that's true. That's getting into alpha. That's relaxation. But you can go way deeper. You can be able to go into deeper levels of meditation to source ideas, to source inspiration. So for example, when I wrote The Code of the Extraordinary Mind, it took me a long time to get chapter one ready. It took me almost three years to finish chapter one. Chapter nine of the book, which was called Live Your Quest, I wrote in eight hours flat. The original chapter nine was something I wasn't happy with. I had five days to submit my book to my editor. And I woke up one day before Christmas and I realized, gosh, I freaking hate chapter nine. And all of a sudden, I feel this idea form in my head. And I sat down for eight hours and retyped and rewrote the entire chapter nine from scratch. The book went to print. And two years later, a documentary filmmaker came to me and said, hey, I wanna make a documentary about your ideas. And they picked chapter nine. Chapter nine of that book became the Live Your Quest documentary, 
which got nominated for an Emmy Award. But it was all written and conceived in eight hours. Now, what was going on there? I had inadvertently tapped into certain altered states to download the information. These states are accessible to all of us. What consciousness ability one person might have, we all have, because we're all made of the same stuff. The only difference is we might be unaware that it's within us, or we might have beliefs that block it. So there's been a ton of research in meditation recently, and what the research is showing is, is still to be determined, because look at this, right? You'll notice that publication count on scientific studies for meditation, this is from the book Altered Traits, is exponential. And a lot of this, these publications are happening only in the last 10 years. So when people say, you know, meditation is fluff or, or I don't get meditation, it's only because we are entering a really new era. When I say we're entering the the transrational era of humanity, this is what I mean. Look at that exponential curve, and it's going to continue rising 20, 30, and beyond. At that point, I believe, we'll be looking beyond just meditation, but at lucid dreaming, astral projection, all of these other beautiful abilities. So we're going to go do an exploration now on altered states, and we're going to start with relaxation. Now, when you go into relaxation, what's happening is you are reducing your brainwave frequency from beta to alpha. Alpha is the frequency of relaxation. Studies show that when you get to alpha, many remarkable things happen. Your body seems to heal itself. Stress disappears. Anxiety reduces. And so there are incredible beneficial effects on the body. There are some now at this point, 14,000 studies, 14,000 studies that show that meditation can have hugely beneficial impact on health. But there's more. When you get to these alpha states, you are also a source of creativity. You can thinkitate, to use Tom Bilyeu's word. You can ask the question and listen to your heart and see what emerges. Now, what I'd like to do now is play for you a sound that simulates the alpha frequency. So the alpha frequency, again, is around 7 to 14 cycles per second. That's how your brain is beating. And this is what it looks like if you could listen to your own head. Now we can go slower. So we can go from where we are now to the realm of theta. Theta is where intuition comes in. Theta is where Tesla and Edison, it's what they spoke about. This is what the theta frequency sounds like. This is what your brain sounds like when it dips into theta. Notice it's about half the speed. Okay, but we won't play with theta now. Rather, we're going to go in... You know what? Actually, let's, let's play with theta. Okay, so we're going to keep this sequence, frequency playing. And I'm going to guide you into a really, really, really deep meditative experience now. Are you guys ready? Now, if you fall asleep, does that mean you fail? No, fine. Just, you know, do whatever your body tells you to do. There is no failure here only judgment. I will judge you if I see you fall asleep in front of my presentation. So what's going to happen is I'm going to guide you using a, um, a guided meditation protocol from, Jose, from the late Jose Silva, the meditation pioneer who died in 1999. We're going to dim the lights. We're going to have the theta frequency playing. Can we lower the frequency a bit? Okay, now this, and, and as you listen to this, learn it because it's very powerful. And this is a head-to-toe relaxation. We're going to uh, slowly by slowly have you focus on your parts of your body and guide yourself into an ultra deep meditation. And when you get to ultra deep, when you get to that final level, I'm going to give you a space to ask yourself anything you want to ask. And here's how you're going to do it. You're going to speak to your heart. This is a Sonia Choquette technique. You guys remember Sonia from yesterday? Yes. So you're, going to ask, so you're going to ask a question. Should I work on this book? And then you're going to respond with, my heart and my heart says, and whatever comes up. And my heart says, and whatever comes up. And my heart says. You're going to do it 10 times, okay? That's Sonia's technique. So you might also say, should I take this job? Should I 
be with this person? Should I move to this country? Anything where the complexity of your decision is so deep, your pure logical mind can't work it out. So we're going to guide you to data, and then you're going to think of the question. In fact, let's think of the question now. Think of your question now. You're going to come back to the question, and you're going to ask the word, and my heart says, 10 times. Okay? And I'll guide you through this. Now, at this point, feel free to get into a comfortable position. Close your eyes and listen to my voice. We're going to start by having you concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp, the skin that covers your head. I want you to imagine as if you can detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by your blood circulation. An easy way to bring your awareness to your scalp is to imagine as if someone has placed a warm, moist washcloth on your head. Feel that tingly sensation on your scalp. Now completely release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Now concentrate your sense of awareness on your forehead, the skin that covers your forehead. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Now concentrate your sense of awareness on your eyelids and the tissue surrounding your eyes. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your face, the skin covering your cheeks. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate on the outer portion of your throat, the skin covering your throat area. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate within the throat area. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your shoulders. Feel your clothing in contact with your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of the skin covering this part of your body. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your shoulders in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your chest. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your chest. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your chest in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the chest area. Relax all organs, relax all glands, relax all tissues including the cells themselves and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. Concentrate on your abdomen. Feel the clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your abdomen. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your abdomen in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the abdominal area. Relax all organs, relax all glands, Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. Concentrate on your thighs. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your thighs. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your thighs in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Sense the vibrations 
at the bones within the thighs. By now, these vibrations should be easily detectable. Concentrate on your knees. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering the knees. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your knees in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your calves. Feel the skin and the vibration of the skin covering your calves. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place these parts of your body in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on your toes. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the soles of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the heels of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Now cause your feet to feel as though they do not belong to your body. Feel your feet as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, ankles, calves and knees feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs, waist, shoulders, arms and hands feel as though they do not belong to your body. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. You are now at the theta level of mind, ready to tap into intuitive intelligence to help you make better decisions in life. At this point, I want you to bring back to mind the question that you had for your soul, the question that you had for your heart. Mentally ask your heart this question. Do so now. You will now tap into your heart to bring forth an intuitive response. Tell yourself mentally, and my heart says, and then embrace whatever thought comes to mind. Again for the second time, and my heart says, what further clarity or thought comes to mind? And my heart says. And my heart says. And my heart says. Heart says. Simply listen. Your mind will retain and remember the information being received here today. And my heart says. 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 I will give you a moment to digest the answer. To mentally make a note of that answer. I will now bring you out of this state so you can come back to the waking state or to a light alpha state and to be able to journal or write down whatever message you received. I'm going to count gently from one to five. At the count of five, you will be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling amazing, feeling better than before. One, two, three, Coming out gently now. Four, five. Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Please lower the sound. Now take a moment, write down whatever message you received. Feel free to type it in your phone or on your journal.
And while we're doing this, let's get a mic in the room. Great. Would anybody like to share? Mike Runner, please choose your victim. So should I share about the experience or the message? Whatever you want to share. Okay, so I'm, I'm a bit shocked how fast I go into those stage because I've been meditating for like five years, but now I'm just like, I got into very scary space where I'm like, oh shit, it's going fast. And staying in that state is something I'm getting more comfortable with. And um, so did you get a message, or did yes. you get any insight? Yeah. Is it so something you'd like to share? I can share that. Yeah. So I've been feeling I have to go to Costa Rica for a while, and I feel like I need to accept that tapping into that is safe, and I'm ready for it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like I felt first I saw a flower like a red flower opening, and then I saw, felt, okay, go there, go down to the source, go deep, and then mm -hmm. it's safe. It's basically, there is no question. I just have to do it. Awesome. So yeah. <laughs> Anybody else would like to share? You ready to catch the mic? Well, that woke you up, Paul. <laughs> is that for you? No, I'm just the receiver. Uh, thank you for receiving. <laughs> I appreciate it. Would you like to stand and face the audience? Yes, I'd love to. Hello. Well, actually, I was, I was going through a lot of process of thinking what to do next after Mind Valley University. And one thing that was really, really, really sitting in front of me is I love personal development. I love Mind Valley. And one thing that I thought that was in my head is going to Kuala Lumpur, work with Mind Valley. So I've been asking, is it something that is true to myself? And it felt like light was opening up, and something told me, like, yes, do it. And, like, every, every crumble of, of as resistance or not being certain just floated away, and I feel calm. I feel, I feel white, like white light just shed upon me, just went through me, and, and like a river just cleansed me. Thank you. That's awesome. Now, if I ever <laughs> interview you and it doesn't work out, I'm going to feel like such an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Someone... Charlie. Um, so, yeah, so mine was really interesting. I had basically asked about, like, next steps because I've been in a lot of transition phases. Uh, and what's really interesting is it actually connected back to what a shaman had said to me at AFES Jamaica. Um, and he had essentially said like, oh, your path is bringing people to the places they don't want to go. And I was like, shit, no, that's really uncomfortable. I would prefer not. <laughs> like, I care too much what people think about me. Um, and what's interesting is in the time since then, I've moved into suicide prevention work and a lot of work in the death space, space as well as engineering hope. And so recently I've been like, oh, but like hope is sort of nicer and it's, you know, like people want that more. Corporations will pay for that more. Um, and so it was questions around that and it was just really solidly around like, you don't have to choose. Like you can bring that dark, going to those dark places into everywhere because at the core, of what you want to teach is being able to go the places that people are scared to. Um, but it was really interesting to me how much it connected actually back to AFES Jamaica. That's beautiful. So thank you, Charlie. Please give all our sharers a round of applause. So, so is there evidence that this works? Let's talk to the rational mind, right? So firstly, intuition feels like guessing. It's the first thought that comes to your head that's usually the right one. When you wait or you pause or you question that thought, your filter system comes in, your beliefs, your rituals, your culture, your self-doubt, your self-esteem, your pride, your ego, and that disrupts the purity of that thought. For example, studies show that people, when they're buying a car, if they decide like what car they want and they just go and buy it, 
versus if they do a day of research and look at all the attributes of the different cars and their lifestyle and then make a purchase, can you guess which one three months later or six months later is more satisfied with their purchase, the impulse purchase or the research purchase? Impulse, it's strange, but the impulse is often the first one. In my case as well, my best ideas come during meditation, not when I'm in the waking state. The more you practice, the more you learn discernment to understand an emotion versus an intuitive impulse. So it's something that you want to practice, but you have the tool that head to toe relaxation. You do not need my voice guiding you. You can mentally, I mean, you know the parts of your body. You can mentally relax yourself. You can also listen to the Ombana app. In fact, to make it easy for you guys, I'll take that meditation. I'll put it on the new Ombana app that launches next month. You can download it and you can listen to it. Okay. So when you get to that state, that's when you ask yourself that question. And that technique comes directly from Sonia. My heart says, my heart says, my heart says. And every time you ask, you get a different refinement of the answer. So let's go on. So what you just experienced was theta. Let's talk about delta. Delta is the level that you're in when you sleep. And there are techniques to tap into your consciousness at delta. And these are some of the things that you're going to hear one of our speakers today, Charlie Morley, lucid dreaming expert, speak about. But before we go to lucid dreaming, I want to give you guys an experience of another form of altered state, the feeling that you get in deep human connection. So let's welcome on stage Leila. The clapping and the walk were so kind of disconnected. Hi, Leila. Okay, so Leila, would you like to tell the audience what you're going to take them through? <sighs> Hi, guys. We're going to go into the most powerful tool that we have, which is each other. As a collective family, when we connect with each other, we can really harness the potential that lives within us. And it's a very simple exercise that, <clears throat> unfortunately, we got told that staring into each other's eyes is rude. If I'm looking at you... Oh, well, yeah. you know, growing sure. up. Oh, okay. Growing, oh, growing up, up. I growing thought you meant like someone in the back of the stage. Grow That's, <laughs> right. So what I'm going to do is later, I'm going to leave you here with the audience to Perfect. do the exercise. Okay? Yeah. Great. So please give a big round of applause to Layla. So as I was saying, we grow up um, thinking or believing that looking into each other's eyes is rude that we're intruding in each other's intimacy. But actually what we're doing when we're looking into each other's eyes is we're giving our bodies the um, possibility to sync, the possibility to connect, the possibility to actually join forces. And another amazing thing that happens is that we, if we stay there, if we stay long enough there, three things are going to sync. Our breath, our heart rate, and our mental focus because we are focusing only in the eyes of the other person and our body is releasing a lot of chemistry in our bloodstream and in the beginning we feel uncomfortable and if we can stay through the whole process what happens at some point is everything else vanishes and all you are experiencing is the moment of connection and that brings your the, your brain to a state that we just learned about which is the theta wave brain in an awakened state. It literally gives you the opportunity to access flow state. Do we want to experience this? Yes. Great. So we're going to do this. <clears throat> we need to partner up. I think the easiest is those of you who are in the left, in the right side, you choose the first partner. So you will be partnering with her. Take the first, the person that is right next to your left and then the next couple and the next couple. So make sure all of you have a partner and then turn towards them. And in the sides, hopefully you have a partner. So let's make sure absolutely everyone has a partner for the exercise. Yes, anybody doesn't have a partner, raise your hand. Okay, we have two here. Yes? Okay. 
So I would love to have the lights a little bit lower, just a little bit if it's possible. And let us take a deep breath together. Inhale deeply. And exhale completely. Close your eyes. Take. Still not having a partner. Okay, stand up, my love. Anybody doesn't have a partner? Okay, so. We have the try waiting. <laughs> Okay, they don't want to be separated. Yes? Would you join this beautiful lady over here? Thank you very much. So this uncomfortability that we're feeling right now, because we're all waiting for something to happen, <clears throat> let's start tapping into this. Because the feeling of uncomfortability is actually telling us that there is a chemical reaction in our bodies, and we want to leverage on us on that to, take the, to change the mindset. Ready? Perfect. So close your eyes again. And take a deep breath in. <sighs> We're going to do two more like that. And one more like that. Now bring both of your hands, one to your chest and one to your belly. And continue taking very deep inhalations. And exhalation with sound. One more very deep inhalation. Ah, an exhalation with sound. And last one. Ah. Now very slowly, very slowly, open your eyes to meet the eyes of the person that is sitting right in front of you. Leave your hands on your body. It will help you through the experience. And avoid the temptation to speak, to laugh. Breathe through the uncomfortability, understanding that that sensation that needs to run away is actually the reaction of your body to the chemistry that is starting to shift in you. Keep on taking very deep inhalations and very deep exhalations so that your breath starts sinking. Resist the temptation to speak. Allow yourself to stay present with this person. And close your eyes again. Go back into your own body and breathe deeply. Breathe deeply because that helps you move the experience through your entire body. Breath. It's the key to life. We broke the first barrier, the first moment. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper. Most of you already dropped into presence. A few of you were still uncomfortable and laughing. It is a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. Give yourself that opportunity. Give yourself the permission to go through that uncomfortability. When you are ready, open your eyes again. Focusing your entire world into her eyes or his eyes. 
with each inhalation, go deeper into her eyes. And with each exhalation, allow the rest of the world to vanish completely. All that is sixed right now, it's him or her. By giving each other the most precious thing that we have, which is our time and our presence, you're helping each other shift your neurochemistry to enter a powerful state. What a gift and how immensely simple it is. Now, for those of you that are brave, I will invite you to take the hand that you have in your heart and separate it a few centimeters and initiate a movement to place it in the chest of your partner. But don't quite place it yet. Stay there a few centimeters away. If you are not comfortable with this, you will keep your hand on your chest as a sign that you're not giving consent for touch. If you have separated your hand from your chest and it's in front of your partner's chest, now I want you to divide the awareness between the eye gaze and the feeling of the palm of your hand. What is happening there? And as you keep gazing, as you keep connecting, very slowly, just like this was the most delicate thing on planet Earth, you will allow your hand to touch her chest, your hand to touch his chest, right there where the heart is beating. You're doing one of the most beautiful and most powerful things that two human beings can do, which is syncing our heart beat, synchronizing our life beat. Keep on breathing deeply. Almost all of you have dropped into full presence. We're going to take two deep breaths to help those of you that are still at the door. Inhale with me. One more. And one more. Last few seconds, without any words, without any gesture, just with your soul and your heart, tell this person, thank you. Thank you for giving me your presence. And before we go back into chatter, I want to invite you to close your eyes for one more minute before we talk, so that we can allow all of this yummy chemistry to sink in our bodies. Just one more second of silence and presence and breath. Thank you very much. It was really beautiful.
beautiful to witness. Thank you, Leila. <laughs> Please give Leila a round of applause. So the interesting neuroscience of what you just experienced is also fascinating. When we connect with someone, whether it's a close friend or it's a date, and all of a sudden we feel those shivers on our hands, we feel this deep connection. We're like, oh my God, what is this person doing to me? Why do I feel different in her experience? Modern neuroscience says that what is actually going on is a phenomenon called brain-to-brain -brain coupling. And what's really going on is that your brain waves, your brain patterns are actually reflecting each other. They are becoming in sync. And so there's now neuroscience for that feeling that you feel when you deeply connect with someone. And that's what you experience. When Leila gave you that exercise, did it feel good? Did it feel awkward? So to some people it might, only because it's, we are trained to consider things like that awkward, right? Awkwardness is learned behavior. But what is really going on there is that in addition to going and taking your own brain waves to a level that you desire, alpha or theta, you just experience brainwave synchronization with another human being. And there's so much beauty in that idea that science can now measure how our brains reflect and mirror each other. So it's not just the poetry of love that we can think about. It's the fact that there's a neuroscience of love which is as real as what Shakespeare wrote about when he spoke about two people coming together really, really, really intimately.